I would now like to introduce our first speaker, Thomas Crawford. Tom is the United States Geological Survey Mineral Resources Program Coordinator. He is based in Reston, Virginia. Tom holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Geology from the University of Washington and a Master's in Geology from Dartmouth College. For 38 years, Tom lived and worked in Alaska in minerals exploration and as a mining geologist before working for the Alaska Department of Natural Resources as Mining Section Chief, Mining Coordinator and Director of the Office of Program Management and Permitting. In 2014, Tom relocated to Washington DC to work in the Alaska Governor's Office before beginning his current position in 2017 with the United States Geological Survey. Hi everyone, I'm Tom Crawford, Mineral Resources Program Coordinator for the US Geological Survey. I wanna thank everyone for taking the time to attend this Critical Minerals Mapping Initiative Data Portal Rollout event. And I want to provide a few thoughts about why CMMI is important to the USGS. I'm sure everyone at this event is well aware that the technologies that are important to climate change mitigation and adaptation are very minerals intensive. These are the materials that are needed to achieve a low carbon future. And the need for those materials cut across multiple sectors of our economies, including transportation, energy generation, and infrastructure. This graphic shows how reliant the United States is on a single source for many of these critical minerals. That single source, of course, is China, but regardless of whether or not it's China, it's unwise for our economies to be so dependent upon any single source for those valuable materials. U.S. government recognition of the importance of critical minerals predates the timeline shown here. But since 2010, with the formation of the Critical Minerals Subcommittee as part of the National Science and Technology Council, there has been increasing US government attention devoted to critical minerals. I'd like to draw your attention to the issuance of professional paper 1802 by the USGS entitled Critical Mineral Resources of the US. That was in late December of 2017. Immediately following the issuance of that report, Executive Order 13817 was issued by the President of the United States, and that executive order uh, led to the creation of the Earth Mapping Resources Initiative, noted here, and more about that later, and the first U.S. critical minerals list. Uh, a product of that uh, executive order was also the federal strategy to ensure secure and reliable supplies of critical minerals in 2019. As you can see, there have been multiple other actions uh, since then. That federal strategy to ensure secure and reliable supplies of critical minerals produced six calls to action. I would argue that CMMI helps to address four of those six calls to action, and those four being advancement of transformational research, development, and deployment across critical mineral supply chains, strengthening of America's critical mineral supply chains and defense industrial base, enhancement of international trade and cooperation related to critical minerals, and improvement of understanding of domestic critical mineral resources. This slide from Nassar et al. 2020 illustrates how net import reliance is really the gap between domestic demand and domestic supply. So improvements to that net import reliance or a narrowing of that gap can be achieved on either side, i.e. demand or supply. On the demand side at the top of the graphic, those improvements can be realized through manufacturing improvements or substitution of other materials. 
and on the supply side, the improvements can be realized through increased domestic production, uh, increased secondary uh, domestic production, and that includes recycling, or through trade ties with reliable suppliers. I would submit that CMMI helps address both the first and third components on the demand side, that is increased production through a better understanding of our critical mineral resources and through trade ties with reliable suppliers, which Canada and Australia certainly are. Another advantage of CMMI to the USGS is that it's simple. Geoscience Australia, Geological Survey of Canada and the U.S. Geological Survey have long histories of close collaboration and our minerals programs would regularly meet and dialogue with one another. So it was really an organic next step for our three surveys to join together through the existing bilateral MOUs between our surveys. And CMMI collaboration has been controlled solely by those simple non-binding MOUs since the formation of CMMI in December of 2019. And CMMI is one of those examples where, and I think this is really very truly the case, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. With our collaboration, we're able to achieve more collectively than any of our surveys would have been able to do independently. Additionally, CMMI supports still higher level uh, engagements between the US and Canada and the US and Australia on uh, cooperation on, on critical minerals. These higher level agreements include the State Department and the Commerce Departments, and, uh, and these higher level agreements get much more complicated. And that's another reason why the simplicity of, uh, of CMMI is to the advantage of our respective geological surveys. Finally, an example of how CMMI is uh, working to the USGS's benefit. In 2019, the USGS began this Earth uh, Mapping Resources Initiative, or Earth MRI. And this is a program of nationwide geophysical surveys, LIDAR surveys, and geologic mapping in partnership with state geological surveys that are focused on areas of high critical mineral potential and the purpose is to increase our understanding of domestic critical mineral resources. Now, a lot of this work is driven by the US's critical minerals list, but it's difficult to go after uh, critical minerals on a commodity by commodity basis. The minerals just aren't apportioned between ore deposits that way. And the Mineral Systems Classification Scheme has provided a logical framework for going about this Earth MRI prioritization process that allows us to address the, these critical minerals in a logical and straightforward manner. And that concludes my comments. I want to thank everyone again uh, for uh, attending this event, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations. Thank you very much.